Hello, I'm Sally Gunn, and today I will be reading about one of the smallest creatures in the world, which may be the most important for life on Earth. Can you guess what it is? Here's a clue. It is the planet's greatest pollinator, causing flowers to produce seeds and fruits. Next clue. It can live in the wild or in boxes. Oh, and I do have the book up here, so you've probably already seen that. This is the story of a honeybee with a very special job. She is a scout. A honeybee scout flies out and explores, searching for flowers from which to collect pollen and nectar for food. Her sisters are inside the hive waiting, making honey, but they really need the scout bee's information. Bees are furry. Even their eyeballs are furry. The hairs help them sense changes in the wind. Bees are charged with static electricity during their flight, which attracts pollen to their bodies. And they have an extra stomach in which they carry nectar home. Honeybees do not, uh, honeybees are not bees that go around looking to sting people. As a matter of fact, honeybees only sting in order to protect themselves. Not all flying insects are the same in that regard. And most interesting to me, honeybees dance to communicate. They communicate millions of messages through their dancing. But as it is right now, human beings really have not understood all of the messages, messages that bees are trying to communicate with each other. The book, Flight of the Honeybee by Raymond Huber, illustrated by Brian Lovelock. A bee the size of a cherry pit crawls from a hive. Her stripes glow golden in the morning sun. Scout has spent her whole life in the crowded hive, and now it is time for her to fly out and explore the world. Time to search for flowers from which to collect pollen and nectar for food. Her sister bees are inside making honey, but will there be enough? The cold is coming, and Scout must find the last flowers of the fall. Scout's wings hum to life so fast that they are almost invisible, lifting her up into the wide sky. She rises in a spiral, up and away from the hive. Scout remembers what she passes as she flies so that later she can return home. She knows that the sun will guide her too. Scout flies swift and straight as an arrow. The wind buffets her, ruffling the fine hairs on her face, but she keeps on steadily and rides out the rapids. Eyes as black as polished stones are searching, seeking a splash of color below. An arresting smell drifts on the breeze. Scout locks on to this scent. She flies over a clearing and spread before her is a marvelous meadow, an ocean of flowers. A flash of feathers, oh no, a hungry blackbird swoops in for the kill. But Scout dives down, she zips down and escapes into the trees, weaving between tangled twigs. It's not just this kind of bird, but there are many creatures that eat honeybees, including other insects. So they have, uh, they must be very careful, they have a difficult life. When the coast is clear, Scout is drawn to the sea of flowers again. She settles on a velvety petal and plunges her head into the flower. Here is sunken treasure, a cup of sweet nectar. The tip of her tongue, shaped like a miniature spoon, sips the syrup. Scout zigs and zags from flower to flower, spreading pollen around. The pollen clings to her fuzzy body a sprinkle of sun powder. By the way, blue is a color that bees see very well. 
So this picture, without saying it in words, depicts that. Scout has finished drinking. She must tell her sister bees about this field of blue, but a thundercloud cloaks the sun. All at once the cloud bursts, rain batters, and Scout has driven to the ground. She crawls under a leaf as hailstones bomb and explode around her. Oh my, poor Scout. A downpour passes and Scout picks up the scent of her hive and follows it. Outside the hive, there is a squad of guard bees. A yellow jacketed enemy is attacking. Scout knows that twitchy way of flying. It's a wasp. The wasp grabs Scout as she glides into land. It raises its stinger, but the guards move in, wrestling the wasp with their legs. Scout is safe inside the hive at last. She begins a dance on the wax comb. An audience gathers, captivated by the floral scent on Scout's body. Scout spins a story in dance, every movement a sentence. Scout waggles, twists, and turns, describing the route to the blue meadow. She pauses only to share samples of sweet nectar. Scout repeats her dance for many sister bees. Now that the sister bees know where to find the meadow, hundreds of bees take off. They flick from the hive like golden pebbles. Back in the hive, Scout passes her precious nectar to the house bees. They put it in the comb and fan it with their wings. The nectar will be transformed into liquid gold, honey for the bees to eat. By the way, when she collects nectar, nectar is mostly water until the bees dry and thicken it by beating their wings, converting it to honey. Scout visits the nursery where babysitter bees pluck the pollen from her body and mix it with honey to feed the babies. The queen sits nearby, long and lustrous. She is the mother of all the bees, laying eggs that look like tiny grains of rice. The queen, by the way, can lay thousands of eggs every day. It is the job of the few male bees in the hive to fertilize the new queen. Exhausted after her mission, Scout rests. She rests her silvery wings for a spell. Soon she will join her sister bees in the blue meadow for the fall harvest. With enough honey, her family can now survive the winter. Scout's daring flight has been worth every beat of her wings. I hope you enjoyed this. I thought it was a wonderful story.